In this video, we're going to go over the settings that you need in Rust on your Windows operating system, as well as the keybinds and commands that you need to set in game to have the best experience possible on a fresh install of the game. So heading down to options, we can knock this out real quick. Your field of view, you want to set that to 90. And if you don't know why, you want to have it as wide as possible so you can get the biggest view range as possible in game. Head bob, turn it off because it's annoying. Crosshair and hit cross is up to you. You could use something like Crosshair X, which is a third party crosshair program. Hurt flash off. I like to turn my advanced plus ping on so that I can see in the bottom left the performance that I'm getting just in case I get a lag spike. Sometimes you need to restart the game. That's a good way to tell how. And rich presence, I turn off bag gifting. You put that on anybody. And then scrolling down, the only thing that really matters is show blood. That'll make your screen a lot more clear when you're low HP. And then max gibbs, you want to set that to zero. Creation effects is a personal preference, as well as everything up above in the censorship. If you do plan on streaming or recording, I would recommend copying the same censorship settings that I have, though. Over in user interface, when you first open this, it's going to be on 1. I like to put it just as it turns to 0.8. It's kind of like where I think it should be at normally. Nothing else in here really matters besides mute global chat, which is a setting that most people don't know about right away. And you can still have chat turned on and certain things will show up in chat, but players will be muted if you turn that off. And then hide text while in ADS is a very crucial setting to turn on because in particular situations, the text can block your screen when you're aiming down sights of a weapon. So turn that on. The audio is personal preference as well, but I'll just let you know those last three things that I have turned on point one, these are extremely annoying and you can still hear them pretty well on this low of a volume or you can just turn it off completely. I hate all three of those things being turned up more than point one. And I do find myself more often than not needing my voice volume turned up higher than one. Moving on to the controls, your mouse sensitivity, you're gonna have to find that one out for yourself. I use 400 DPI on like a 0.6 to 0.9, depends on how I'm feeling, but it should be like a perfect 360 from the most left side of your mouse pad to the most right so basically whenever you make a fluid motion with one swipe should be like a 180 and i like my aiming mouse sensitivity to be a little lower than my regular sensitivity um, all of these you want on hold the rest of that you want off the dismount speed should always be on zero and then there's a couple of abnormalities that we need to look at in the key binds, such as the ping system for when you're looking down binoculars, the light toggle for your weapons. You want to put this somewhere that you can access easily without accidentally turning it on, as well as the fire mode. So if you're switching from burst to regular mode, we have our hover loot, which I set to my forward button on my mouse. And then the change vehicle seat, I put that on H. And some of these are not set by default. So you want to make sure that you come in here and set them to something also, I like to put my examine held item on L onto screen. Pretty simple here. You want your FPS limit to be set to zero. We're going to plug a command into the F1 console later on to uncap it completely. Then over to graphics, the one that everybody wants to know. All right, here we go. This is the settings that I use. I find pretty big difference between high and ultra, not so much between very high and high and absolutely no difference between anything below high. But if you're on a lower end PC, you'll find that potato is probably the best setting for you or medium draw distance. I like to have on 1500 because I play on busy servers, but you could crank that all the way up and you won't really see much of a difference. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, you want the on plus boost turned on. Everything else you can copy. I'm not using global rendering. I don't even think that's enabled yet in the game. But in the future, once they get that working, that's probably going to be a really good thing to have turned on. And then you can see my mesh quality settings. If you're still looking for an FPS boost, then you can come here, turn grass down to zero and tree meshes down to 50. But you're going to have a harder time seeing people turn everything off here except for sharpening and then put the anti-aliasing on TSSAA. This is going to make your shadows look uh, not stupid. And then over in experimental settings, you want to turn your GC buffer all the way up. But if you notice that you're sitting at like 99% RAM usage all of the time, you're probably going to want to turn that back down a little bit, maybe to like halfway. And then and turn optimize loading on the partial that's going to allow you to load into servers faster and then turn occlusion culling on but if you're on a really low end pc you might want to turn that off and now we're done with step one out of three and i'm gonna have a ton of information in the description below for you guys so you can just refer back to this in the future if you ever need to copy paste some shit it'll be down there and also while you're down there if you could go drop a follow on my new twitch account that'd be much appreciated this guide created by dog that I have linked down below has a lot of useful information on it, but also most of it's outdated. So we're going to go over the commands and keybinds that you're going to need. These launch option things used to be really important for Rust, but now it doesn't really matter anymore. GC buffer has its own settings and we're going to make a custom keybind in a little bit. And I would not recommend putting that in your launch options like it's suggesting here, just in case changes are ever made in the future. 
So I'll have all these in the description below for you guys to copy and paste, as well as a little explanation as to what they are, just in case you don't really care about them. And if you ever need to unbind the key, you just type bind the key and then two quotations. And you're just going to copy them one by one and paste them into the F1 console. And if you don't know what that is, when you push F1 on your keyboard while you're in game, this menu pops up. And then at the top left, you just want to make sure you clicked on console and then you'll see this little bar with the flashing thing and you can paste it in here. We've got the combat log on F1 and F2 and that basically just shows your damage that you've done or been dealt. The command that we've bound to our V key is also kind of strange and unique to Rust in that we can change our FOV by pressing V and it kind of gives us this ability to zoom in and zoom out and we have it on a hold instead of a toggle. Also, binding your kill to a button like P is very useful because you use this a lot in game. And the last showcase is of the custom keybind that we made on Shift plus K. So every time you load into a new server, you're going to have to do this. And the only real reason that we need this is for the headlip inertia because I cannot stand it having it any other way. And also the hit notification level two is pretty nice. Basically, these are just commands that need to be re-input every single time you open Rust or start a new server. And the head lerp inertia is going to make our head snap forward faster when we release alt. I'm just gonna fly through this real quick because this doesn't really apply to most people, but if you're on a build server that allows you to no clip or enter debug camera, this is the command that I use for my debug camera. Keep in mind, I do have it set to left shift plus K because I use this on the staging branch, which means I can have the same keybind because it's two different games. I got the no clip and the debug camera down in the description for you guys as well. This allows you to fly, enter debug camera, which is like third person free cam, and then that, and then that custom keybind that we have set up makes our camera move all smooth like this. It allows us to do cool zooming things real smooth like. And then finally, step three, just a couple settings in your windows that you need to change. I'll have some links in the description below if you would like to learn more in depth on how to optimize your windows. So if you go to your mouse settings, additional mouse settings, and then pointer options and uncheck this box under pointer precision, this makes it to where your mouse doesn't move based on the speed that you're swiping it. You need to have that disabled as a gamer. This is just something you should know. Next, you're gonna wanna search up game mode and then go to your game mode settings, make sure that this is enabled. Then search up GPU or graphic settings change default graphic settings, and then turn on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Go back to your graphic settings, click browse, and then find the location of Rust, and you're looking for the rustclient.exe, select it, and then click add. And now you'll see it over here. You can click on that, go to options, and then switch that over to high performance and click save. You can then right click your desktop, and this is for NVIDIA users. You're gonna wanna go to your control panel, the most important thing to note besides brightness and contrast and gamma is the digital vibrance. You want to turn that up quite a bit because Rust is really desaturated and this just makes it look better. It's easier to see things. And then under Manage 3D Settings, you're just gonna wanna copy what I have here. It's a whole bunch of shit. Just make sure where you see my GPU, you select your GPU. And then we've only got one more thing to do after this, which is to search up power options. We're gonna go to our power plan. It's gonna make us go back over to here and we're gonna select the high performance, which might be located under that drop down menu if you have a hard time finding it. And then boom, we are finally ready to go. Like I said earlier, I've got a bunch of videos in the description below if you wanna go deeper on how to optimize your Windows settings or if you're on a lower end PC, there's some videos that'll help you out there to boost your FPS as high as possible. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, leave a dislike if you didn't, and I'll see you in the next one.